Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. Today I'm going to be talking about working with jersey. Jersey is a type of knit that feels great to wear and drapes really well. It's perfect for making t-shirts and maxi dresses, but sometimes it could be a little annoying to work with. Hopefully these tips will help make it easier to sew with. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to talk about is cutting out your pattern pieces. Now, this fabric here is a print, so a lot of questions is how do you tell the right side from the wrong side? Usually with a print, it's pretty easy because one side will be more vibrant than the other. So this is the wrong side, this is the right side. With a solid color, it's usually a little bit more difficult to tell. Now jerseys are infamous because they do have a tendency to roll. If we look here on my salvage, you can see the fabric is rolling right here. What I've noticed for several different examples, it tends to roll towards the wrong side of the fabric. So we can use this rolling for our advantage and it can help determine which is gonna be the right side or the wrong side. When you're going to go ahead and cut out your pattern pieces, lay your fabric so that it is a single layer. So we're cutting everything out individually. So if this pattern needs to be cut out twice, I can lay it right side up, pin it, and then I'm gonna do the opposite, flipping it over. So that way you get two opposite pieces. Now this tends to take a little bit longer to do than just folding the fabric in half, but we need to ensure that our grain line is going to be correct. So your grain line always needs to be parallel to the salvage here. If it's a little off grain, what could happen is after you create your garment, maybe some of the seams will twist and kind of twist around your body and we want it to lay straight down. Now when you're cutting out your pattern pieces, you can have a couple of different options. You can pin it and cut it with your scissors or use fabric weights and cut it out with your rotary cutter. If you do with pins, make sure that the pins you choose, I have my set right here, that they're ballpoint pins. Ballpoints are unique because they have a more blunt end than the sharp pins and they actually push through the fibers of your knit. If you use a sharp pin, it could actually puncture the fabric which could eventually lead to a tear. So I can go ahead, pin all the way around, and then use my scissors if I decide to go with the pin route, or use your rotary cutter and use fabric weights to hold everything down. If you have a pattern piece that needs to be cut on the fold, I'm going to lay down my first one, again, single layer. You can go ahead, pin it, draw a line around it using your fabric marker, unpin it, and then on this edge, you're going to flip it. So if you need to draw yourself a line, go ahead and do that. Then you go ahead, pin it, and then cut the whole thing out. We're going to be using this arrow here as our grain line arrow. Again, making sure that it's parallel with the salvages. And the reason why, if you're wondering, well, why can't I just go ahead and fold it and then not have to worry about cutting everything out individually or doing this whole fold method? It's because even if you're careful and you think you're folding it correctly, while the grain line may be correct on the top half of your folded fabric, on the bottom half, because this fabric tends to stick to itself and tends to slither around, it could be off grain on the bottom layer. So that's why you really need to be careful and it's just easier to take the extra time and cut everything out as a single layer. Now also make sure that when you're pinning your fabric and cutting everything out, your fabric is all on your table laid out and it's not hanging off the table because as it's doing that, it might actually stretch your fabric and of course we don't want it to stretch as we're trying to cut it out. One of the things that makes Jersey a little bit of a pain in the neck to work with is the fact that it rolls. You can see the rolling here, and some fabric just curls more than others. This fabric actually is not so bad, but I've had some jersey that curls a lot, and it just drives you crazy as you're trying to pin things together and trying to sew. So there's one trick you can do in order to help alleviate this, and it's going to be spray starch. So you can see my before and after here, and I took care of this curl up here at the top. You definitely have to go ahead, read the directions to the spray starch that you're going to use. This one I got at my local fabric store. And sometimes what you need to do is you spray your edge of your fabric that's curling. You may have to do a couple of applications at this. Let it soak your fabric for a little bit. Then you're going to grab your iron. Now put your iron on whatever setting is going to be for your fabric. So if you have a synthetic or knit setting, you're gonna go ahead and use that same setting. Make sure that you don't have any steam 
We don't need any seam, it's just gonna be a dry iron. You're gonna place it down. I would just use your finger to, to push out the roll a little bit. Then place it down, leave it for a few seconds, and then lift it up. Don't just place it down and then push your iron across your fabric. And you may have to clean your iron after you're done doing this. So like I said, you may have to do it a couple of times and it's going to make your fabric a little bit stiff, but it'll be a lot easier for when you're pinning or hemming and also with sewing. One important thing though, you definitely wanna make sure that your fabric is washable. So check that little fabric information tag Make sure it's washable before you add any starch to it. After you finish sewing everything together, you can go ahead and wash your garment afterwards to get out the starch and to make it wearable. And since we're on the topic of using your iron, quickly, if you're going to use interfacing, make sure you pick a knit interfacing because we want to make sure that whatever you attach your interfacing to is still going to have a stretch to your fabric. A lot of people prefer to sew their knits on a serger, but if you don't have one and you're just using a sewing machine, it's still possible. There's just a few things you're going to need. First thing, for your needle, you want a jersey stretch or ballpoint needle. Again, we want that needle to have a blunt end, not a sharp. I also like having a twin needle. You can buy this at your fabric store as well. And this is going to help with finishing stitches such as in hems. All-purpose thread is fine to use. And then for my foot, I have here a walking foot. You can probably get this from your sewing machine dealer. And you see on the bottom, it has those feed dogs just like we have on the bottom part of our sewing machine plate. So what this does, this foot will lift and it'll kind of help feed the fabric through the machine more evenly. When it comes to sewing seams, you're gonna to wanna to be careful on which stitch you pick. We want a stitch that's going to stretch with our fabric. So chances are you're not gonna to wanna to use a straight stitch because if you stretch your fabric, you may pop your seams and stitches and stuff. So I have a couple of different options here on my machine and you can check if your machine has an option that'll work as well. First one here is this number two stitch. This is a stretch stitch and you can see it kind of looks like a zigzag stitch, but it is smaller and is kind of more at an angle. So this is definitely an acceptable stitch to use. If you don't have that, you can just use a regular zigzag stitch. Now, usually with the zigzag stitch, you want it to be a little bit more, I guess, squattier and longer. So for the width, a 0.5 is good. And then for the length, if you can adjust your machine, a 2.5 for that length. We have an overcast stitch and a seam overcast stitch here. So if you have either of these two stitches, you can use that as well. I'm ready to sew a seam just as an example. Now I have my walking foot on. You can see how the, the foot actually lifts up as it's sewing. You'll have to look at your manual to see how to add your walking foot to your machine. And I'm just doing it at my seam allowance. Now, if you did spray starch in the area where you're sewing, it should feed through the machine pretty easily. And you wanna make sure that you do not stretch your fabric if you are using a stretch stitch or a zigzag stitch. Ideally, with your seam, after you take it out of your machine, it should lie nice and flat. Sometimes if you have a seam and it ends up with the fabric slightly doing a little bit of waving, usually what's happening is the fabric is getting stretched. So it shouldn't happen if you have a walking foot. If you're using just a regular foot, it could be your presser foot tension is too tight. So if you can adjust that, you can loosen it a little bit but you just need to make sure you're not stretching that fabric so you don't get that effect. Now we can test it and our fabric still stretches and the threads are not breaking. With a knit, you do not have to worry about finishing your raw edges because as you can see with knit, we don't have any fraying going on. But what I do is after I create my seam, we're gonna pretend this is my seam here, I'm just gonna go along and trim really close to that stitch. So I'm cutting the majority of the seam allowance off and just leaving a little bit on. You can use a twin needle if your machine can do a zigzag stitch. The twin needle is put into your machine just like a regular needle because it has a single base up here in the top. You're going to thread your bobbin as normal and now we're gonna to move to the top part of the machine to show you how to thread. 
To do this, you're going to need two spools of thread. I'm using two different colors, but obviously you're gonna to wanna to use one of the same colors. So the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna take one spool, you're gonna put, put it on your spool pin as normal and thread your machine as normal. And then I would put it through the right needle. Then you're gonna take the other spool and usually machines have this extra little attachment for putting another spool of thread. If not, you can just rig your, your thread so you'll be able to feed it. So just because you don't have something like this doesn't mean you can't do this. You just have to be creative about it. And now I'm going to thread the machine just like I did. You just wanna be careful that you're not tangling both threads. So just be careful. And now we're back at the needle. So my first thread, the red one, you can see is going through my thread hook right here on the top of the needles and then going through the right needle. My second one, the green one, I'm not gonna put it through this little hook above the needles. Instead, I'm just gonna go directly through the left needle trying to keep my thread separated. I'm gonna go ahead and do an example of doing the hem on my jersey. Now I need to look at the right side of my garment so that way on the right side I get the two rows of stitches and on the back it'll kind of look like a zigzag stitch. So that's why you need to look at the right side when you do this. My fabric's already folded over and I kind of measured where the edge is so this needle on the end should catch the edge of my raw edge on the wrong side. Now I'm just doing a regular straight stitch and I know you're wondering, well, you said don't do a straight stitch because it'll break. But in this particular case, it's all right to do a straight stitch because the bobbin thread is doing the work for us and going back and forth between the two threads, thereby creating sort of a zigzag fashion on the wrong side. You can also see that I switched to a regular foot just to show you that you can do it. Uh, if you're able to adjust the presser foot tension. As long as your fabric is not waving behind it, showing that it's stretching, it should be fine. Also, you may need to fool a little bit with the tension of your thread till you get something that you're happy with and it's lying nice and flat. Here's the right side of that hemline. You can see the two rows of stitches. So you want to make sure that it's lying nice and flat. If you start to have some sort of pin tucking action here, which means that you start getting a hump in the middle of these two thread lines, usually that's an indication that your thread tension is too tight. So you may want to loosen that a little bit and see if that works out better for you. So let's test it, make sure we can still stretch, which we can, so that's good. Flip it over to the wrong side and you can see my stitches there. So you see it's not quite the same on the back side. Now I didn't quite catch the edge of my hemline here, which is fine. You can just go ahead and trim all this excess off to make it look a little bit neater. We hope you find these tips helpful the next time you have to sew with Jersey. New tutorials are released weekly, so please subscribe to be notified of the next release. Make sure to check out our other videos and visit professorpincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 200 sewing video tutorials, including our exclusive premium content. Our premium membership is only $5 a month for unlimited access and only available at professorpincushion.com. Also, don't forget to download our mobile app for videos on the go. Thanks for watching.